beaver Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast. It's also a video. I'm Red, I'm Bavan, and I'm Talia. And today we're talking about voting. Uh, we actually are starting a series yes. where not only do we talk about the presidential candidates, mm -hmm. we also talk about an extra topic related to voting. We figured that, you know, a few more weeks and then we have to finally vote. Yes. And it worked out nicely. We will be able to talk about every candidate and I think we'll be able to also discuss many of the related topics to voting. Yes. It will be interesting, it will be fun. Um, off the bat, we want to clarify that the Filipino Freethinkers is supporting nobody. Nobody, we have no official stance on whether you should vote for this or that candidate. But that being said, um, we have a variety of choices. Yes, and we, they're all personal choices. Yeah, so we are not endorsing it. anyone as if you would follow our orders when we tell you to do stuff, right? Like we told people to donate last episode. They didn't, didn't get the happen. memo. Anyway, not even one. <laughs> not even one. No. <laughs> no, it was a very subtle and very, you know, not so obvious reminder to donate, okay. right? Like I'm, uh, like I'm doing now. It's a very subtle reminder. Anyway, so yes. subtle. voting. So subtle. We will right. start with Miriam, right? Why Miriam? Maybe it's because she's at the bottom right now, mm -hmm. for better or worse. What do we think about Miriam? I, I, I'm sorry to say this, but I think it's pointless voting for her. Because she's really far down in the polls. Mm -hmm. She only got 3% of the vote. Yes. That, that's not yeah. nearly en enough. Okay. Also, um, she, uh, I was very disappointed that she picked uh, Bong Bong Marcos to run with her as vice mm -hmm. president. Uh, that to me was a deal breaker, automatic deal breaker. Also, the fact that she was implicated in the PDAF scam. She, she allegedly received money from Napoles along with 15 other senators. So that for you was the, yeah. was the deal yeah. breaker. So what's your take on her? For me, I guess this is a sentiment that a lot of people have that she, if she had run even six years prior, she might have had a better chance. Yeah. And as she's been... You mean at, at, at winning or at life? At winning <laughs> simply because there a lot of the things that blew up in the past six years yeah. cast a bad light on her. Mm. Like more people have been criticizing her because of how she behaved in Senate in the past six years. Mm. And I feel that if that didn't happen, perhaps also if... if she had run before we found out that she had cancer. Yeah, that was perhaps what I was people would have more of a to, vote yeah. of confidence for her. Yeah, that was a very important issue for many people, like her stage four cancer mm -hmm. story. Yes. Yes. You know, people having worries about her health. Mm -hmm. You know, whether she will be able to finish her term, and why she's not even. She doesn't seem to be campaigning right now. Um, yeah. She wasn't in the debate. She missed the last. She one. she tweeted her opinions in, and it. You know, does lend uh, more credibility to the narrative that she is sick, and there are Very rumors sick. even that the only reason she even ran is so that Bong Bong could have a running mate. I mean, whether or not that's true, that's practically what happened. Bong Bong does have a running mate, and although it's not really the case here that when you vote for the president, you also vote for the vice president. It, it actually rarely happens that they win together. Yeah. Like, what people are thinking is, oh, but if Miriam dies, then Bong Bong will win. I mean, that's not necessarily the case, mm -hmm. but given the high ratings of Bong Bong, you know, yes. it might as well be true. You know, And with Miriam there, yeah. the stage for the presidential debates also become a stage where Bong Bong can be mentioned. Mm. Not that she had to do that, because apparently the Duterte is doing that for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one time, though, when I did watch her perform in a debate, she didn't even, I think, participate enough. Mm -hmm. Like her, hers yeah. was more of a, like, the problem is democracy itself, or okay. like nothing really is going to change. Like you have all of these lofty ideals. Where will you get the money? I mean, she was kind of answering, but not really. So mm -hmm. I found, you know, that her performance wasn't so good. In that, yes. um, maybe in a debate about democracy. That yes. would have been appropriate, yes. but given that um, the, the real questions during the debate was in a democratic system such as ours, how will you actually mm -hmm. 
spend the money that you theoretically have, and she did not perform well and, in that. Uh, for a presidential candidate, she seemed very nervous in the debate. Her voice was shaking. She wasn't in her top four. Mm, not no. at By all. By far. Yeah. Uh, I was very impressed with her, though. Like, um, let's talk about the positives now. Oh, yes. Like, I was very impressed with her support for secularism, especially um, in her authorship of the RH Law. You know, yes. RH Bill back then, RH Law right now. And she was one of the few people who argued very strongly for secularism and for women's rights. Yes, with the Magna yes. Carta for women, even. Also that, yeah. She also had, you know, some other bills re related to, like, mental health. Yes. Yeah, especially with her experience with her her son. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other good, uh, other pluses when it comes to Miriam. I, I'm not sure. I stopped following her campaign as soon as she uh, endorsed uh, yeah. Bong Marcos yes. as her running mate. Both of them have been implicated in the PDF yes. scam. So. so not that it's new for a Marcos to do that. <laughs> her main platforms are, I guess, like template. Pretty yes. much for everyone else, you know, anti-poverty programs, mm -hmm. making it easier to do business, you know, mm -hmm. cutting red tape, fighting corruption and all that. All of them probably have this as well. So And they don't really put much effort into the, the platforms they, they give because most, most of the time the Filipino people don't really care about mm -hmm. the platforms that our presidential candidates have. More often than not, mm -hmm. no one knows what the platform is of the person who won. Actually, they roughly have an idea like everyone will probably be anti-poverty oh yes everyone will probably be pro-education yes. you know but but like Except if you but if you wrote down like the actual platform of everyone yeah mm -hmm. you know and then you ask like random people on the street who do you think that is like when it comes to these things or to most things are there opinions people won't be able things? to differentiate right yeah. yeah so where do they differ i guess in the social issues i mean the like let's say women's rights when it comes to divorce i believe miriam is pro mm -hmm. but with reservations yes. um, the two conditions are that the spousal abuse yes so that's uh, grounds for divorce mm -hmm. and number two it's if the if one of the partners is already living with someone else. Mm -hmm. So so those are the only two valid grounds in Actually, her book. I, I think her her first condition wasn't just spousal abuse, but domestic abuse in general. So that included yeah. if children were getting hurt. Okay. It wasn't just uh, spousal abuse. Okay. So um, I'm. This is I think a step forward because the yes, others I definitely. I believe are not mm -hmm. even pro divorce. They're more for the speedy annulments or whatever. So this is a step forward, but in her clarification of her stance on divorce, she did say that she does not agree with no-fault divorce or divorce mm -hmm. on demand because it might trivialize the institution of marriage. So to her, uh, marriage is still very important and it might make the youth go into marriages willy-nilly because they think they can get divorced anytime. So, I emphasize her conservatism in this matter because it's it, this uh, importance that she places on the institution of marriage yes. is probably also the reason that she's anti-same-sex marriage, mm -hmm. which is, I think, a, a very, you know, it, it speaks a lot to her appreciation for secularism. She did say that she was against same-sex marriage because she believes that um, marriage should be between a man and a woman. You know, mm -hmm. and for someone who people think is as conservative as Miriam, mm -hmm. you know, like she she had several statements about sometimes being agnostic. Some people even interpreted it as her being an atheist or something like that. She certainly has a lot of um, theological training, but at the end of the day, it seems like she's still yes. conservative. You know, man, yes. woman, that's yeah. the kind of marriage. She did study theology, she right? Did. She yeah. studied a lot of things, but she seems rather homophobic at times. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like she will, she will make jokes about someone perhaps being gay and in a dismissive manner like she did with with ping ping right? calling ping pinky, pinky. Or something like that right okay yes. so you know not, uh that's you know i think yeah um it could be homophobic but of course the, there's also the culture in the philippines which makes this a fairly common occurrence amongst okay. people. on the other hand she is actually for the anti-discrimination bill Yes. And she's yes. actually one of the, the main proponents of that uh, that bill. To be fair to Miriam, she's 
she's rather prolific in her in her writing of bills and okay. her support of bills. She she has a finger in almost every major topic. She has syntax. Let, she has let's just put it this way. way. <laughs> that on the spectrum of Akiao on one end, Miriam is <laughs> on the, the yes. other end. She actually yes. uh, get you know your money is uh, gets so more mileage yeah. when yeah. you give it to Miriam. So many M's. Like I should work for <laughs> campaign teams. Anyway, she does work hard. And I believe yeah. that she is sincere. So that's uh, certainly something that's going for she her. She cares about legislation. She and cares she does about her yeah. job. She's sincere, right? Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the bad points. Um, you already yes. mentioned it yes. when she yes. partnered with Bong Bong Marcos, right? Yes. As I, I, po I asked on my, on my wall, like, who supports Miriam? And an interesting response that I got was, well, an, a response to a response that I got was, Miriam is, will definitely fight corruption. And then the, the response was, oh, by partnering with corruption in the, in the mm -hmm. form of Bong Bong Marcos, like yes. burn, right? Yes. Yeah. Like you, there's no escaping that. A lot of mm -hmm. hearts were broken. A lot of yes. people who bought her books or who... Uh, Supported her. Who repeats okay. her jokes. You know, he, <laughs> she has a lot of jokes. Who watched her talks in schools. She's still mm -hmm. one of the most consistent yes. performing when it comes to polls done in schools. Yes. Right? And a lot of those hearts broke when she announced her running mate, which, which was Bong Bong Marcos. So, I, yeah. Why? Right? Yes. Yeah. So, I think mm -hmm. we, you know, there are, you can explain that away. I mean, if you participate in this system, which is imperfect anyway, you will have to compromise. And maybe that's just one of the compromises that any politician will have to, to well, get into. It's possible that she doesn't have money to run. Uh, yeah. Her, her mm -hmm. campaign and she and the, the only other option or, or aside, from, yeah. aside from Bong Bong at the time was I think Trillanes hmm. right the only other option who was there was it Trillanes or Cayetano okay. I, I think when you try to fight against corruption you can't compromise yes okay and it's an because then you thing. become part of the system yes. that you're trying to fight against we will get back to that point because democracy is all about compromise some interesting things about Miriam we, we tackle the good, the bad. Some interesting things about Miriam. Mm. She used to be a she play play basketball. Yes, she used she to. Was a swimmer. She was a swimmer. Uh, she <laughs> also wanted to get into church or at some point in her life. You know some some of the many interesting things. But I think the what one of the most controversial things that she said in her career mm -hmm. was that at one point she was proposing that people who did not pay taxes not be given the right to vote. And her argument goes something like this. Uh, people who don't pay taxes, I, I, I think she means income taxes, yes. right? Uh, must be very, very poor. And therefore, this, these people will be easier to buy um, come election time. So it will be easier for certain candidates to buy their votes. And th um, thus, elections will be decided by the vote buyers. Yes. And by the, the, the most stupid and ignorant or just essentially whoever's most corrupt the bottom and, of the barrel and most rich yeah a lot of uh, the poor who, who don't pay income taxes because they're too poor to pay income taxes they're the ones that the government yes. needs to help they're, they're the, the ones that needs uh, they, they need the help the most bavan for president <laughs> <laughs> yes. and I, I agree yeah i recall this happening around the time when i was still in school and and that, and that caused an uproar because that means almost all students are disqualified. Mm. The students who have the time to look through campaigns, to, to figure out who they want to vote for, the ones who are already in university, yeah. of age, but not yet making money. With that, we'll jump into our first election-related topic, mm -hmm. the right of people to vote. Yeah. Like, should it be a duty to vote, where, like it is in certain countries? Mm -hmm. And what does it really mean to have the right to vote? People are very sensitive about this, being disenfranchised. You know, once upon a time, women could not vote. Black people could not vote. And now, when Miriam suggests that poor people should not be able to vote, people are reacting in a very violent, violent way. Like, my rights were fought for. Mm -hmm. People died for my right to vote, for this democracy that we have. And then you will just suddenly say things revoke like... Revoke it. Yeah, <laughs> revoke the right to vote. So when it comes to, to voting, people are very sensitive about it. And the fact that she turned it into a class issue. Yeah. Because suddenly she was disqualifying a lot of the lower... Disenfranchising, yes. yeah. She was, she was taking away rights from the poorest of the poor. Yeah. And they're already the most disenfranchised. Mm. And so taking more away from them just... 
seems wrong. It seems wrong, especially yeah. in in the position of government, where you should be taking care and you should be trying to have more equality, or you're supposed to be bringing more equality into the system. Come on, it's the majority of the population that you're taking the rights away from. Okay. Their, their rights. And she from. didn't even address the concern of tax evaders because even the yes. richest of the rich, they sometimes don't pay taxes at all. Yeah. Simply yeah. because our, our laws are so lax on it. Or they pay one tenth of what they're supposed yes. to be paying. I think the ideal democracy is that if a, a certain segment of the population is starving and dying, as was shown in re, in recent news, right? Yes. Yes. I mean, instead of giving giving them rice, they were given bullets. You know, that was the, the campaign slogan. There's something wrong. Yeah. And democracy should be able to fix that. People should be able to say, most of our resources should go to feeding hungry people. Mm -hmm. and, or educating them. Yeah. yeah. And if that's not a priority, then there's a mismatch between what democracy is supposed to do versus what democracy is actually doing. We will talk more about that in a future episode, but right now, we will just focus on the duty to vote. Is there really a duty to vote? Okay, um, here's my opening salvo. I think that there is no duty to vote. I think that when people vote, they have a duty to vote wisely, right? Yes. To vote well. If people vote and they will, and it's almost ensured that they cannot vote wisely, then they should not vote, yes. right? Like it's right. a you know prescriptive should, but I'm not saying that they sh the right should be taken away from them. Right? A lot of people assume that when you have the right to do something, then you should do it. Mm -hmm. right? We had a uh, discussion last week yes. on the right to have kids. Right? People should have the right to have kids, but not all people should, should have, have kids. kids. Other rights that go like this are what? Freedom of speech. Everyone ha should have the right to freedom of speech. But, but that doesn't mean that just exercising it is necessarily good. Like You can say homophobic things. You could... Mm -hmm call for the death of certain minorities yes. you know it could become yes. hate speech rights can and still be abused at the yeah end it can day. be used in the wrong way mm -hmm. and same goes with with voting you know when you when people vote and they aren't informed i am already starting yeah. giving the reasons for how people can possibly not vote well mm -hmm. let's say there's a person who's not educated about anything you know he has been watching um Kardashians. Kardashians. Nonstop. <laughs> or, you know, whatever, like like the science shows, there's foreign foreign uh, news and not mm -hmm. Philippine news, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This person doesn't even know who the candidates are, right? Like it's just really a, a coin toss, a coin flip. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like whoever he chooses, it, it doesn't matter to him. Should this hypothetical person vote? Probably but, not. He should be allowed to vote. Sure. That's, right? that's his right, but... Mm -hmm. Like my, my analogy, you shouldn't vote. I, I'm trying to think of an analogy where, where this would be appropriate. Like mm -hmm. I think your vote is kind of like a glass of liquid okay. yeah. that you add to a communal drinking pool where all of the communal drinking water will come from, yes. right? If you do not know that the, the, the water in your glass is clean, you shouldn't add it to the pool. Yeah. Right? You shouldn't it's, risk poisoning everyone with yeah. something you're not sure of. But something you're not sure of. So a citizen's minimum duty in such a hypothetical scenario would be to check if the water is clean mm -hmm. before adding it to the best of his ability. Yes. Right? Like people can't tell the future, mm -hmm. right? But there, there are like pasts of these candidates that the, the person could check to extrapolate, you know, what would probably happen. And if the, the vote is not informed, it's the same as adding just a random liquid to something that everyone will drink. And I emphasize this, everyone will drink, because people, when they complain about others who do not vote, they say, if you do not vote, then you cannot complain, right? I don't if there that. were another source of drinking water, then sure. Yes. But if, every, if the, the pool is imposed on everyone, right? Mm -hmm. if you're forced to adhere to the government led by whoever candidate wins, mm -hmm. then you can, can complain, exactly. right? So that's one case. Like if you can't vote wisely, mm -hmm. if you don't know that you're voting well, then I think you shouldn't. And th there's also the issue of uh, some people not supporting any of the candidates. Any of, yeah. Uh, some people would argue that you should vote for the least evil, but sometimes it's uh, very difficult to tell 
Right? Yes, Who because people, the least evil? people are <laughs> complex. You know, yeah. you can't just say yeah. one is better, objectively better than the others. Yeah, you can't. You can't. And it's like comparing among evils, right? Like, let's say you're in a hostage situation, right? And then you you're you're forced to vote on who who which hostage will be murdered next, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's a it's a bad situation that you're in, right? Like you vote using your own self-interest. Like maybe you vote not you at the very least, like someone yes. else. Yeah. But it's a it's a bad practice. Like you're you're part of a flawed system. And if you have sufficient reason to believe that the democracy that we have right now doesn't work, then I think you're justified in not voting. Like like let's say think of a hypothetical government where the the entire government is controlled by a, a minority of evil men or end women, you know, like it's an evil group of people controlling it. Like our and government. <laughs> yes. <laughs> why, why go to the hypothetical scenario? Yeah, we're right, right here. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, no, no. Like, let's just, let's give some credit to our government. It's not as evil right. as this one that I'm imagining. Sure. They rig the votes, right? Don't so we? that... So <laughs> okay, guys, come on. So that whatever com the, the, the election... Uh, results are mm -hmm. their candidate would still win okay right so in that case not participating in the elections would remove the legitimacy from such a practice yeah. right if nobody voted then people would uh, call it for what it is it's a dictatorship yes. i mean it's a it's a bad government it's a failed state and voting might lend it legitimacy that it should not have so if um, not voting could be a very informed and political decision to say yes. that the system that we have is not working anymore. And that's another thing that people are very sensitive about. Yes. Like people would say, what are you now, an anarchist or a, or a socialist or whatever, mm -hmm. like communism doesn't work and all that. Sure, like the democracy or representative democracy might be the best system that we have now. In practice. But there's no... Uh, there's no evidence that says it can't be improved. Actually, it's, it's this argument that I, I also use to encourage people to consider an, an abstain vote. Yeah. Sim because there is the value of showing the government that you have no trust in any of the candidates. Yeah. Because that is a powerful choice. Because I've seen this happen in my school where we had a, the first time an independent candidate won for presidency. Mm. It showed that both of the parties that we had were, were deeply corrupt. Because mm. there had been repeated cases of, of stealing money from wow. the government. And it, it, was, it was actually very representative in a very small scale of what was happening in the Philippines. So when a new candidate came by and said, I don't like either of them either. Mm. And I will try to, to represent the people more than these, uh, these parties do. He won. Yeah. Because, because, and he was essentially a candidate who represented the abstain vote. The I don't like the parties we have now vote. Mm. Okay. So there's that option also that people that a lot of people say is wasting a vote when it really isn't. It's more a more powerful statement than just choosing the lesser evil. Thank you for watching this episode. If Miriam is your candidate or is not your candidate, just share this anyway. <laughs> we will discuss the other candidates as well in this series. And yes. uh, please vote wisely. On behalf of Bavan and Talia and Garrick and the analyst desk, see you next week.